All right, hello. So if you're watching this video, I just discovered that if I go across the street to the library, I can check out a very simple Wacom tab, uh, which plays nicely with my Linux computer. And so, you know, as you know, pardon any of my mistakes, as you'll notice, the Wacom tab doesn't have uh, anything on it. It's just a blank screen, right? And so I can write on the screen and it'll project onto my monitor. Uh, so if I seem a little odd at first, as I get the hang of things, uh, please bear with me. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to hopefully use this to um, work out or create screencasts for the derivations that we do in class on the whiteboard. And so uh, to start, I was hoping to start with a relatively simple case of just working through our derivation, if you will, uh, of our differential of dimensionless g. Dimensionless g is going to become one of our favorite quantities in the class, and the differential of dimensionless g will become a generating function uh, which we'll use uh, throughout the class to, or essentially as a starting point, uh, to work out a whole other slew of relationships. Okay, And so I'm going to start okay, with our combined statement of the first and second law, okay, namely the du is equal to tds minus p dv. Okay, so here I have a differential for u. Okay, so u is going to be my dependent variable with independent variables s and v. Okay, uh, and so I want expression for dimensionless g. Okay, so I'm going to want first get an expression for g, uh, molar Gibbs free energy. And so g is a convenience function. And what we do with g is, or the goal of g is to swap the role of our two conjugate pairs, or the variables in our two conjugate pairs. So I want to flop, flip the role of t and s. So rather than have s as an independent variable, I'd prefer t. And rather have rather than have v as an independent variable, I want p as an independent variable. So I'm going to flip those two. So I'm going to define g then. And g is going to be equal to u. Okay? And then I'm going to add conjugate pairs. Okay? Well, I'm going to add you know, conjugate pairs, but the sign's going to be opposite as it appears in my differential. So here I'll subtract then a term TS, and here I'll add a term PV. So to get an expression of just differential of G, okay, what I would do or how I would proceed is, well, so I'm going to come back to this term in a second, is if I work out the differential, so DG then is equal to DU minus, okay, now we need product rule, TDS minus SDT. Okay. And then differential of this, so differential of PV, so product rule again, plus P dV plus V dP. Okay. So if I plug in my expression for U, well, U is TDS minus P dV, and I have a minus TDS minus S dT plus PDV plus VDP. Okay. So here I have a positive TDS, which should cancel with this negative TDS term. Okay, so let me cross those two out. I have a minus PDV term, which cancels here with the positive PDV. So those two cancel out, and I'm left with DG is equal to negative SDT plus V. DP, right? And so you'll see, essentially, I could have skipped this step. Um, you know, again, our role or our goal for G was to take our two conjugate variables and to flip the role and then change the sign would change during the process. So TDS becomes negative SDT, negative PDV becomes positive VDP. Okay, cool. Okay, so now I have an expression for G. Um, here, I'm going to come back up to G. And before I get our expression for differential of uh, dimensionless G, Okay, here I have u minus ts plus pv. Okay, remember u plus pv is just our definition of h. So the goal of enthalpy is to flip the role of our conjugate variables uh, p and v. Okay, so g could equivalently be written as h minus ts. Okay, all right. So where we go from here? So I'm attempting to scroll up is I want an expression for the differential of dimensionless g. And so how I proceed is I start out by writing, I want the differential of dimensionless g. And so what I mean by dimensionless g, is remember g, this is my molar Gibbs free energy, 
It's going to have uni units of energy per mole. R is my molar gas constant, so it has units of energy per mole Kelvin. Temperature will have units of, of Kelvin, so RT will have units of energies per mole. Right? And so this will form a dimensionless group. Okay? R times T is often associated or often called my uh, thermal energy, and so it gives us a reference um, to be able to understand uh, the scale of G, um, but that's beyond where we are. Okay. So if I want a differential of the dimensionless G, all I'm going to do is I'm going to work out said differential. Okay. So R is a constant, so I'm going to bring it out to simplify it for myself. So I'm going to write this as 1 over R times the differential at G over T. And then where I'm going to go from there is I'm just going to apply quotient rule. Okay. So when I think about quotient rule, I think V U prime minus U V prime over V squared. Okay. So this will be 1 over R times okay, uh, V U prime minus U V prime all over V squared. Okay, so part of my writing again, I can't actually see <laughs> uh, what I'm writing, it just appears on the screen. Okay, so from here then, I'm going to uh, uh, distribute. Okay, so this will be equal to. So this is, uh, so I have 1 over r times tg over t squared. Okay, so this will be 1 over rt dg. Then 1 over r uh, minus g dt over t squared. So this will be a minus 1 over r t squared. And actually this will be a g over rt squared. So let me see if I can change this to a g g over rt squared dt. Okay, good. And now I'm going to plug in um, our expression for g. g is h minus ts. And we had the dg is negative stt plus vdp. Okay, so this will be equal to 1 over rt. So then my expression for differential of g is negative stt plus v dp. Okay. And that's minus, I'm going to write dt over rt squared. Okay. And then I'm going to plug in for g, h minus ts. Okay. So let's expand this out. So this is equal to, so I have a negative s over rt dt. Uh, plus V over RT DP minus H over RT squared DT uh, plus, so this is TS over RT squared, so this would be a positive S over RT DT. Okay, so now if I simplify, here I have a negative s over rt dt. Here I have a positive s over rt dt. Okay, so these two terms cancel. And we're left with the differential of g over rt is equal to v over rt dp minus h over rt squared dt. I'm just going to flip the order. So the way we normally write it as is the differential of g over rt is equal to negative h over rt squared dt plus v over rt dp. Okay, cool. Okay, and so if I look at this expression, okay, we also see that the differential of g over rt, okay, and I guess I should technically put that in parentheses, over, okay, so partial differential of g, partial t, a constant p, okay, it's just this first term, negative h over rt squared, and partial of dimensionless g, 
now with respect to P holding T constant is equal to V over RT. Right? Cool. So this first term is essentially our Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. Uh, and this comes up a lot. So maybe in your kinetics class, if you're trying to work out uh, temperature dependence of your um, equilibrium constant. So equilibrium constant, um, what is it? Log K is just delta G of reaction over RT. Right? And so if I want a temperature dependence of delta G of reaction over RT, right, be related to negative delta H of reaction um, over RT squared. Right? Cool. So another common way that this is written, okay, uh, so I'm looks like I'm at the end of my page, but but I should be able to squeeze it in, is to manipulate our differentials a little bit. Okay, so here I have uh, dt over t squared. Okay, and so what I could equivalently write that is, okay, well, it's a differential of one over t. Okay, if I again think v u prime, okay, um, minus u v prime. So v u prime in this case u prime is just zero. It's be um, so v u prime minus u v prime, so negative dt over v squared, right? So negative dt over t squared is just differential of inverse t. And so what that allows you to do is I could take this first term and I could rewrite it as differential of g over rt is equal to, okay, so negative, a, negative dt over t squared. So now this becomes a positive h over r d inverse t, okay? Um, you could do a similar trick with the second term, okay? And, you know, maybe not quite as common, uh, but if I wanted to, um, v over rt, I could relate to uh, z and p. So this would be uh, z over p, um, and then, you know, 1 over p dp, I could relate to differential of, of inverse p, okay? But for now, I'm just going to leave it as this since we're out of paper, okay? And then likewise, if you wanted to, you know, differential of dimensionless g now with respect to inverse t at constant p is just equal to uh, h over r, okay? Oop. And so that's my attempt to box it in. Uh, I shouldn't try that, but there's my uh, derivation for um, differential of dimensionless g. Hopefully it helps you out. Um, I'll try and save these notes as I just wrote them up and post them on my screencast. Um, along with the, the actual nice type notes that, that we have in class.